Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to take out my mountain cur named Stubbs. So you get to see him do some work. Hopefully he gets treed. It's super muggy here. It's about 90 degrees and it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. I went out earlier this week a couple times and nothing was really moving. But hopefully he gets treed, gets on one. And during this video, I'll also answer some of your questions that you submitted to me. So I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Taking the old prickier mountain fice out today. The old skittish fice. The old fice. Vice. Got him loose. Walking in here to the woods. So the first question I got a while back was from Ron Wilson. He wanted to know when I got into cur dogs. First got into cur dogs about six years ago when I got my first one. And then he asked what my favorite was. My favorite cur, if that's what he means would be Jax, which is the first one I got. He's also probably the best dog I've ever had. But favorite breed, I've also hunted, hunted and trained and basically had every breed of coon hounds also. But right now I'd probably say I prefer mountain curs over just about everything. Anymore, it seems about impossible to find a good hound that will consistently tree coon that doesn't go a mile to try and do it they're either just so tracky they never get treed or they go a mile to slick tree or go a mile or two to tree a coon and run by 20 of them i'm not saying there aren't good hounds that exist because there are but if they're started or finished they're way more money than what i have and as far as pups, it seems like there's way more hound pups that don't turn out than I've had with curs. It seems like you get more out of your money with curs as far as natural starting ability goes. And then the next part to Ron's question asks if I preferred a, a close hunting or a get out going type of dog. I just prefer that when I unsnap the dog, it goes as far as it has to to tree whatever I'm after, if it's a squirrel or a coon. If that means it goes 25 yards and trees a squirrel, that's fine. If it goes 500 yards and trees a squirrel, that's fine. I just don't want it to blow through the country, not hunting. I want it to unsnap. When I unsnap it, I want it to take off running, go get treed, do what it's supposed to do, not hang around me. But I also don't want it to be a high-strung idiot that's just going to run through the woods I turned it loose in. And then he, the next part to his question, he asked how long I've been squirrel hunting. We're running squirrel dogs, and I've been hunting with squirrel dogs for about 25 years. I started at a very early age with my dad, but back then we had, just had walkers and blue ticks that we used for squirrel, and they worked pretty good. I 
Next part to Ron's question, he asked if I prefer a silent mouth dog on track or an open mouth on track. And that's not as big a deal to me. I have been around some dogs that just bark nonstop on the ground and usually don't end up getting treeing with hounds. But it don't really bother me either way as long as they get treed and have whatever game I'm going after. I don't like a loose mouth, loose mouth idiot though either. Squirrel, squirrel dogs, it don't don't matter much to me because we have fox squirrels here and they don't timber a whole lot. I know if I was hunting somewhere where there's gray squirrels, that'd be pretty important to have a silent dog on track. Then he asked what other hobbies I have. I also, like if you've seen other videos on my channel, I also deer hunt quite a bit. Um, mostly bow hunt. I also coyote hunt with hounds. In the wintertime, I'll also go calling coyotes also. I enjoy lifting weights. I'm also a high school football coach. And that's about all of my hobbies, just being outside and hunting. I also like mushroom hunting, shed hunting. Pretty much anything you can do outside here like that. And lifting weights. And this time of year, August through the end of October, I'm pretty busy with football too. This dog seems to be making some decent progress. He's actually hustling around the woods more, actively looking for stuff. Like I said. When he trees, he's not a blow the top out tree dog. He'll just bark a few times. Right now he just jumped up on that tree and he's looking at me. But I'm not gonna go to him until he actually barks more. He uses his eyes a ton. Try and look at that tree top from here, see if I can see anything. You can tell the leaves are still real thick. Good boy. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Looked it over. Can't see anything, but the leaves are pretty thick, so could be in any one of these trees right here. Once the leaves are off, off to kill him one. He hasn't had one killed to him yet. Next question, Sand Creek Kennels asked me uh, what my favorite bloodline in blue ticks is. Up until I had those couple from Mark, I hadn't really been paying much attention to the blue tick breeding as of lately. But when I was younger and the blue ticks that dad had and those two blue ticks I was hunting, they all had similar breeding. 
and they were Jet and Uchman bread, which is the typical stuff you hear with blue ticks, but that seems to be what I've had the best experience with was Jet dogs or Uchman bread. Next question, Average Drill asked me, what's the best breed for small land plots? And I would say it's mountain curs because they'll actually hunt where you turn them loose. Anymore with modern hounds, you might as well just turn them loose in an open field and just go over where they get treed because you turn them loose anywhere and they just go wherever they want. Most of the newer ones I've seen, especially in competitions, they might run by 15 coon to go tree one by themselves because the handlers beat them for treeing with other dogs and breed them to not want to tree with other dogs and all that stuff. So you get some goofy behavior like that. Definitely not fun to hunt if you're just looking to pleasure hunt. Adam Bates asked me what's the best way to prevent a dog from getting sick in the box other than just not feeding them before you take them. This is one thing I haven't had much difficulty with because from a very, very young age, I take them for rides all the time. I'll have my wife and son play with them a bunch, really socialize them a lot when they're puppies. Try and take them as many car rides as you can when they're very little. A lot of times I'll hold them or, or have them just loose in my truck and they can ride up front. Sometimes it helps them be more calm because they can see what's going on. And I haven't had one puke in the front of my truck yet, so. But I know there are some dogs that it don't matter what you do, that just, they get motion sick and they throw up when they travel. Not a whole lot you can do. The only thing you can do is just try and get them used to it. Just expose them to it as much as you can. Try and make them comfortable. And you already said, other than not feeding them before you take them, just make sure they don't have a full belly when you're taking them hunting. But some of them grow out of it too. So I would just keep working with them on it and stay patient. Let me know in the comments below if you guys like videos like this where I answer your questions or show more of me and talk more because it's kind of hard to make videos of pups and make them interesting when you're training them and there might not be that many trees but just let me know the type of videos you guys want to see if you like me interacting with you more spider webs I just posted on my personal Facebook page and in my group, Stark Outdoors, letting you guys know that I'm filming this video now. I already did this earlier where I asked you guys for questions and some of you asked, but hopefully some of you reply there so I can add some more to this video and answer more of your questions. And something something else I was wondering, if any of you, any of you have any experience with thermals when you're squirrel hunting this time of year, I wondered how they worked in the daytime with thick leaves. I thought about getting one, but I didn't know how much use I'd get out of it. But if I could use it this time of year where there's thick leaves and know if my dog's treeing something or not when I'm training a pup, that'd be really beneficial. So if you have a thermal or if you've seen one used in the daytime with thick leaves still on, let me know in the comments.
we'd walk the west edge of that woods where a lot of the hickory and acorn trees are. He only made that one tree in the beginning. Now we'll walk along the north side a little bit. I'm on the edge of the woods though, because it's really thick in there. Until you get up here a little bit, you can cut in the woods. I've also seen two hawks flying around this wheat field out here. Hopefully they're not killing too many squirrels. I feel bad for the farmer because it was so wet this harvest season for the wheat that once they got it cut, they couldn't get it baled because it just kept raining and raining and raining. So it just sat here and rotted, but now the seed is reseeded from the cuttings. And every wheat field around here is like a food plot for deer. I'll show it to you real quick. Something else I've been wondering, if you guys ever had any luck finding ginseng, I've never actually set out just looking for it exclusively in the woods. But when I'm squirrel hunting and stuff this time of year, I do just look around where I walk just to see if I find any, but I have no idea anywhere to look like I do mushrooms. So I just wondered if you guys have any luck finding ginseng, where do you look as far as, are there anything in, is there anything in the woods that you look for that ginseng might grow by or certain soil types or areas or terrain. Just let me know in the comments if you have any advice. He hasn't treated it again yet. So hopefully we'll get on that one. Hope we find a good another spot before I have to go and get my football. pretty hot out already. He went to the swamp and got a drink and was cooling off. But last year, we had such a bad drought, there was no water even in that swamp, which made it kind of nice because you could just walk right across it instead of around it. Uh, I better put a lot of that, actually a lot of that before. Come on. Come on. Well, made it back to the fall. Probably go somewhere else because it's only about 11 o'clock. I can be out for like another hour hour and 15 or so before I have to hurry home and take a shower and leave for football. So stick around, try and take them to a better woods and get treated. Well, get right to the next woods. Get studs out. Hopefully we can get on that one. He's been loose in here for a while. Hasn't made a noise yet. Getting to be about the middle of the day, so nothing's probably moving and he can't find one apparently, but been scouting for bow season because that's coming up and I think I figured out the first place I'm gonna sit opening day it's right on the property line of this woods and on the other side of the property is bedding and then the property I can hunt is 
a giant section of oaks. There's ground just covered with acorns. There's a lot of sign, and then the field out here is beans. So it's a good early, early season setup. So I'll show you what it looks like here. look up pretty good too because the predominant wind will be coming this way so if they're feeding out there in the morning working their way in towards here towards the bedding I can be in a stand right back in there he finally checked in walk through here good boy let's go get him come on buddy Bare dirt in here. Tons of acorns. Went a little bit further down and found an even better spot. Same type of terrain. Lots of acorns. It's right on the edge of the woods. And the edge is pretty open right in there, so I can put a stand. My mobile stand and a tree like that. Get up in that pretty easy. Be able to see the thick stuff on the trail behind me and then also be able to see this bean field and then anything that might be bedded across there if it gets up in the morning i'll be able to see it too so i can hunt out of it but i can also use it as a scouting tool as an observation stand just to see what's in the area because there's dough in every wood you go in in here but if there's a nice buck in here that's something you want to look for obviously I haven't had any cameras out this year because I don't want to rely on technology too much. I've did that in years past and it kind of just takes the fun out of it because if you already know where they're at at the exact time, it's just not as fun to me. I like kind of the element of surprise, not knowing what you're after until you see it, actually hunting them down and oh, this is even better. Fences down here, that trail with all sorts of nuts on the ground here. I'm surprised I haven't walked in front of a trail camera here yet. I knew I was heading towards a good spot. Just kept walking about 20 yards from where I last showed you guys. Found some pretty nice war in beds right here on the point of this woods. Could be doe bedding, but either way, it's a good sign. Nice little trail here just keeps going along this fence row. So I'll probably come along in here somewhere and just pick a tree one morning and climb up and see what I can get on. Early in the season, I just try and get a doe first just to put more meat in the freezer because we eat deer meat all the time. So first thing I just try and get whatever I can. So if I see a doe opening morning, I'm gonna shoot one. And then be a little bit more selective, but I have a ton of ground I can hunt in a few different counties so I can get quite a few deer this year and I have a pretty good sized freezer in my barn. So I'm trying to get that full. Had my camera off and my battery's getting dead. I was just walking, been walking and talking in here. Almost stepped on one, it just jumped up, it was right on the edge up here, took off running. So I'll go up here and see if I can find exactly where the bed's at. And I can already see a pretty good tree to put my stand in. So season don't come in for another three or four weeks, I believe. It's the middle of September when it comes in. So they come back. Especially like this, I got a dog with me. I'm just walking through the woods, talking. They're pretty used to it in this area because my family's been hunting these woods with dogs like this for over a hundred years now. So they get pretty used to people being in here during the day and at night coon hunting too. It's like the buck I shot last year. Came out of the woods, 
that I coon hunted the night before and ran right underneath my stand and I shot it at about five yards. Now I'll show you. It was right in here, tucked in, in the shade. You can feel a breeze though. It's hot out, so they are where they can feel a breeze and they're out. Here's the edge of the woods. He's tucked in right in there, laying down. He can run out that side if he has to. He can run out this way if he has to. He can escape from any direction. You can hear and smell from about every direction too. There's, it's kind of a fence row, but it's mostly just weeds here that jut out from the woods, about 30 yards or so, still on the property that I can hunt. There's an opening in it. See right here? Right in there, there's a bed in there too. Got food on both sides. Oh yeah, look at this. Two bed right there. Sit in this bed. You can see everything that way, behind you, over there. You're hidden, and it's actually pretty comfortable right here. Got a nice breeze, wind blowing through here. So make sure if you're watching this, you stay tuned for some of my deer hunt videos because I'm gonna put a stand right back there, and I bet you I'll get something pretty quick. See, to me doing this, when I'm working with a squirrel dog, actually boots on the ground, scouting, looking for tracks, deer itself sign bedding thinking how the wind and food relate to each other that's way more fun to me than just sticking a cell camera out somewhere and letting technology do the job for you oh yeah these beans are pounded right here deer eating on it it's not bad to use trail cameras they're good they help you a lot but I like just doing it more old school. I've used cameras in the past and it's fun to get cool pictures, but I'd rather just go out and scout. It kind of helps build anticipation and excitement going out and doing it too. Yeah, there's a nice trail through here. Yeah, yeah this is nice. Never hunted back here for deer, it would be a good spot of course there's a lot of tree stands in here but wouldn't you know none of them over here where all the sign is they're all over on the other side of the woods where it's easy to get to close to the parking oh look at this thing Nice track. What I have noticed in here that's different from most woods around here is there's not hardly any rut sign at all compared to the other woods. So that tells me that either this is hunted by a bunch of idiots that just burn this property out or there's not a good food source close to this so the does just leave and take the bucks with them. But this definitely does not look like a good place to hunt during the rut because I don't think I've seen a single rub in here or a scrape or really anything, just a lot of tracks and early season food source with that beans and the acorns in here. There's a lot of acorns. He just opened up a second ago. He's probably pretty hot. You better go in there and see what he has. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Big hollow den. Good boy. Well, it's getting pretty hot. He got treed again. So I'm gonna get out of here and go home, get cleaned up, go to football. Make sure you stay tuned. There'll be a lot more videos coming. Thanks for watching.